Hello everyone. So in this video we are going to talk about linear equalization with peak distortion criteria. So in the previous video I have discussed mean square error criteria. So uh, today we will discuss peak uh, distortion criteria. So we will see what is the difference between those two. Linear equalization in linear filter most often used for equalization is the transversal filter shown in the figure. So this is the most commonly used filter. Uh, for linear equalization so as i uh, as i told uh, it consist of unequalized input and then these are the tap weight coefficients those are those will be used to adjust the amplitude and phase of the in, uh, input signal so here we will be getting different input signals okay so those will be varying from each other in time as well as amplitude so at the end those all will be summed here and the feedback is taken from the output to correct our algorithm so this is where we will be getting corrected output okay so basically linear equalization is used to correctly receive the transmitted signal uh, the, okay so when transmitted signal is transmitted at the uh, transmitter it will be uh, passing through the communication channel so we all know that communication channels will be adding additive white gaussian noise to the signal so in order to remove that noise and correctly uh, get our original signal back we will be using linear equalizations okay so we will be seeing peak distortion derivation in our case so vk is the input sequence ik is the output sequence ik cap is the estimate of output sequence and cj are the tap weight coefficients of filter so the estimated k symbol is given by ik cap equal to j equal to minus infinity to plus infinity cj into v, v of k minus j so where ik cap is not identical to the transmitted information symbol ik an error has been occurred so if ik cap and ik are equal then there is no error if they are not equal so uh, it indicates some error has occurred in the communication channel so two criteria have found widespread use in the optimization of equalizer coefficients that are cj so those are peak distortion criteria and mean square error criteria so we will see peak distortion so peak distortion is simply defined as the worst case inter symbol interference at the output of the equalizer so this is the worst case inter symbol interference which will be uh, observing at the output of the equalizer so the minimization of this performance index that is j is called as the peak distortion criteria so we have to minimize the performance index so equalization performance index that is denoted by j consider the minimization of peak distortion assuming that the equalizer has an infinite number of taps so we are taking infinite number of taps here the cascade of the discrete time linear filter model having an impulse response fn and an equalizer having an impulse response cn so fn and cn are the impulse responses of two filters cn can be represented by a single equivalent filter so this represented by a qn which is the cascade of cn and fn so c function is here f function is here so it will be from minus infinity to plus infinity where we will be getting okay so qn is simply the convolution of cn and fn so qn is a function of cn and fn as the equalizer is assumed to have an infinite number of taps its output at the kth sampling instant can be represented by so uh, estimate at the kth sample ik cap is q0 into ik plus n is not equal to k i n into q of k minus n plus j equal to minus infinity to plus infinity c j into nita of k minus j so the first term in the above equation represents a scaled version of the desired symbol so scaled version means a multiplied version so q naught is a constant it is multiplied to the input symbol i k so the second term is the inter symbol interference so this is the inter symbol interference representing term the peak value of this interference which is called the peak distortion is d of c is the peak value of distortion so it will be equal to minus infinity to plus infinity 
n will be not equal to 0 in this case q of n so q of n when you replace I can write it as j equal to minus infinity to plus infinity cj into f of n minus j. So d of c is a function of equalizer tap weight coefficients. So with an equalizer having an infinite number of taps, it is possible to select the tap weights so that d of c equal to 0. So we want d of c should be 0. That is given equal to 0 for all n except n equal to 0. That is the inter symbol interference can be completely eliminated if and only if q of n will be equal to 1 when n equal to 0 and when n is not equal to 0 q of n should be 0. So these are the two cases where we can eliminate completely inter symbol interference. By taking the z transform of equation, we obtain q of z equal to c of z into f of z, which will be equal to 1, or simply c of z I can write f of 1 by f of z, okay. So the equalizer with transport function c of z is simply the inverse filter to the linear filter model f of z. So c of z is just a inverse to the f of z. Complete elimination of intersimple interference requires the use of an inverse filter to f of z. So we have to use a uh, inverse for f of z to completely eliminate the intersimple interference. So we can call that filter as zero forcing filter. So as it is tending to completely or making the ISI zero, it is called a zero forcing filter. So here is IK channel f of z additive white gaussian noise nita k is added here so equalizer we will be having c of z equal to 1 by f of z so i k cap will be getting here so this is the estimate of the i k so this is transmitted and this is the received the cascade of the noise whitening filter having the transfer function so we are adding noise whitening filter here its transfer function will be 1 by f star f into 1 by z star so and the zero forcing equalizer having the transfer function 1 by f of z results in an equivalent so when we apply noise whitening filter uh, the overall transfer function will be c dash of z equal to 1 by f of z into f star of 1 by z so 1 by f of z is this is the, uh, the previous man and f star of 1 by z star is added because we are adding here noise whitening filter so that will be equal to 1 by x of z so that i have shown here so it is as it is channel x of z and uh, white cause here noise we are adding here we will be getting yk here noise whitening filter whose uh, transfer function is 1 by f star of 1 by z star so vk will be getting here then we will be giving it to the equalizer c of z equal to 1 by f of z so we are finally getting ik so this is the noise whitening filter which we have added in this case <coughs> The impulse response of the combined filter is ck dash equal to 1 by 2 pi j contour integral c dash of z into z to the power k minus 1 into dz. So I can write it as uh, the below equation. So 1 by 2 pi j contour integral z to the power k minus 1 by x of z. So c dash I can write it as 1 by x of z. So the noise sequence at the output of the equalizer has this power spectral density snn of omega equal to n0 by x of e to the power j omega 2. So I will be getting x of e to the power j omega 2 by substituting for z equal to e to the power j omega t. The variance of the noise variable at the output of the equalizer uh, sigma n square will be equal to t by 2 pi multiplied by whole this whole thing. So we will be adding here Sn of omega we will be substituting then we will be getting n naught outside and we will be getting this equation. So then the signal to noise ratio is simply the reciprocal of the noise variance sigma square n at the output of the equalizer and is given by gamma infinite means signal to noise ratio at, uh, for the infinite number of tap weights. So 1 by sigma n square into which is equal to t n naught. So I will be writing this equation as it is to the power minus 1. So x of e to the power j omega t corresponding to the Fourier transform of the sampled sequence x of n has an interesting relationship to the analog filter h of omega used at the receiver. So there is a relation between h, x of n and h of omega. 
since s x of k which is equal to minus infinity to plus infinity so h star of t into h of t plus so this is the estimated this is time delayed version of h of t by applying Parseval's theorem we can write it as x of k equal to 1 by 2 pi minus infinity to plus infinity h of omega square into e to the power j omega kt so h of omega is the Fourier transform of h of t so the above integral equation can be expressed as x of k equal to 1 by 2 pi minus pi by t to plus pi by t n equal to minus infinity to plus infinity h into omega plus 2 pi n by t a whole square into e to the power j omega kt so i have replaced for this one so note this equation as a so we will be comparing this if the in another equation and we will be finally concluding for this derivation okay so you remember this equation a the Fourier transform of x of k is x of e to the power j omega t equal to k equal to minus infinity to plus infinity x of k into e to the power minus j omega t. Okay, so this is the Fourier transform of x of k where we will be replacing z by e to the power j omega t. Okay, so instead of z I have written e to the power j omega t. The inverse of this one is given by x of k small k it is t by 2 pi minus pi by t to plus pi by t x of e to the power j omega t into e to the power j omega t so when we take inverse transform we will be getting this one so this is the equation b so compare previous equation a and b i can write it as x of e to the power j omega t equal to 1 by t n equal to minus infinity to plus infinity h of omega plus 2 pi n by t whole square so where uh, omega will be between less than pi by t so substituting for x of e to the power j omega t, I can write for signal to noise ratio as t square n naught by 2 pi minus pi by t to plus pi by t d omega divided by summation from n equal to minus infinity to plus infinity h of omega plus 2 pi n by t whole square to the power minus 1. So for an ideal channel coupled with an appropriate signal design that results in no intersymbol interference, this whole term will be equal to t. So when this will be, be uh, this will become t and when we uh, substitute upper and lower limits we will be getting uh, 1 by n naught so where pi and this uh, t one t term will be getting cancelled okay so this is how we will be getting the uh, expression for noise spectral density of a filter that is n naught okay so this is the signal to noise ratio term so yeah that's it uh, at the end we got uh, signal to noise ratio gamma expression and thank you thanks for watching if you are new to the channel please like the video and if you have not subscribed the channel please guys subscribe so it helps us thanks for your support thank you